Hey, welcome. I am so glad you are joining us. We're going to continue our study uh, in maybe the most famous passage of Scripture, definitely one of the most powerful passages of Scripture in all the Bible, Psalm 23. So we've been looking at this for a couple of weeks. Today we are on verse 4, God leading us through dark valleys. You, you know, probably the most famous verse of the 23rd Psalm is the first one, right? The Lord is my shepherd. So that's the most famous. Maybe the most infamous is the one that we feel. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's verse four. And so, so all of us, we've read that, we felt that. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today, of, of, of walking through those dark valleys, those dark Places. So go ahead and find your message and notes. You can you can click on a link there. Um, you can you can download them. You can turn in your Bibles to Psalm 23 if you want to be right there with us. Grab a pen, and uh, we'll, we'll try to always have the, the the scriptures and the notes there on the screen. Also, so I want to begin by reading this infamous verse together. So I hope you have it, and I hope you'll do this with me. I know it may be awkward where you are, but man, it's good to speak the word of God out loud. So we're gonna read this together, verse four, as it is on the outlines of the New King James Version. You ready? Go. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, now, I was thinking a little bit about that, and we want to we want to dive into that. But I was thinking, you know, it, it uses the word shadow of death. It doesn't say death isn't real. It just says in the valley, it's facing the shadow of death that that is making the place dark. If you dig into the Hebrew of all of that, the nuance is it's not just talking about physical death. It's talking about walking through dark times, walking through dark places, walking through things that are that, that, that where the light is being blocked out. And when we walk through those places, it's really easy to be afraid. But here's the deal. We're all going to walk through dark places. You're going to lose someone. Things are going to happen. You're going to have crisis in your life. Some things we walk through dark places because of things we've done. Sometimes they just happen in our lives. And if we're not careful, all the hope and excitement of the dream we once had begins to drift away because we get afraid, because we feel like we're going to be stuck in this dark place forever. But David says, I, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Not the valley of death, the valley of the shadow of death, right? Not to minimize the difficult things that are happening, but he said, I'm, I'm, I'm walking through, and oftentimes what's causing the, the, the issue in my life is the, is the shadow. And so I, I thought about shadows for a minute. I put down a couple of things just in that. I don't want to over-spiritualize one word, but, but, but I, just, I, I just found it interesting. Here's the first thing I thought of. Shadows are often bigger than what's causing the shadow. You ever, you ever noticed uh, you, you seen on a, in a cartoon or on TV, you know, uh, when, when somebody wants to scare someone, one cartoon one character wants to scare another, they get in front of a light and they may be really tiny, but their shadow is so big. Oftentimes the shadow is bigger than what's causing the shadow. Now listen, that doesn't minimize the significance of what's causing the shadow. Those things are, are real. They're issues we need to deal with. But oftentimes what, what makes us afraid is that this, the, 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 this issue, this thing, this problem in our lives has cast a really big shadow. I, I also thought of it like this. The bigger the shadow is, the more of the light it's trying to block out. Right, right, try that. If you got like a desk lamp, you know, if you if you hold your hand really far away from the desk lamp, close to the to, to the desk, the shadow is very small. And the more of the light you block out, the bigger the shadow gets. Oftentimes in our lives, some of the biggest shadows are cast because I really believe the enemy is doing all he can to use these things to block out as much light in our lives as possible. You know, the shadows make us afraid. The shadows don't necessarily harm us. It's often our reaction to the shadow, 
right? I've never seen anybody run from getting hit by the shadow of a car. And so, the, so, so, so we've got to understand that the shadow in itself has no power. What happens is the shadow causes so much fear in our life that it keeps us from ever addressing the thing that's causing the shadow in the first place, of focusing on the right things that need to be dealt with. Again, I don't want to lose focus on the reality that something is causing the shadow. It's just as children of God, as we trust God as our shepherd, we have to understand and grow in our walk with him and our trust in him. Here's, here's one more thing I was thinking and I'll move on. There is no shadow without there being a light somewhere. See, shadows don't exist without the presence of light. So when you're going through a dark valley and you think you're alone and you see the shadows around you and they're huge and they're growing, remember that if you see a shadow, if you're experiencing a shadow, that there is light somewhere. Find the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Right In him, there is no shadow. You can see plainly. You can deal with the things that need to be dealt with. Now, let me go before we dig into the scripture. Let me give you a couple of truths about valleys that we got to keep in mind. Here's the first one. Valleys are certain. They will happen. You're going to walk through them in your life. Right? You can't get to a mountaintop without going through a valley. We all know that. Jesus is realistic about that. John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. That means it's going to happen. You're going to experience dark times, dark places, the valley of the shadow of death. You're going to walk through those in your life. It's certain. Here's the second thing. Valleys are unpredictable. You can't prepare for them. You don't know when they're going to happen. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great? If it was like, hey, you're going to go through a valley three weeks and two days from now, right at 12.02, because you'd be like, all right, I got to get everything in order and get all of this right. But that's not the way it happens, is it? Often everything can change with one phone call, one diagnosis, one tragic accident. Oftentimes, valleys come when we are at our weakest. Things just tend to come and overwhelm us in times that we go, oh, I just wasn't ready. We need to know they're coming. Look at, look at Jeremiah 4.20. It says, disaster follows disaster. In an instant, my tents are destroyed. My shelter falls in a moment. Now listen, don't grab that as your life verse, all right? But that's real. Good days turn into bad days quickly. Something's been going on way too long. We just feel like, man, everything got destroyed. They're going to happen. They're certain. They're unpredictable. Let me give you two more. Now, these, these turn the corner a little bit, okay? Because while the positive is sometimes hard to find, these are positive. Here's a third one. Values are transitory. They're not permanent. You won't be in the valley forever. David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's something you go through. Sometimes you can feel like the valley is a dead end. But, 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 but if we're followers of Christ, we've got to look at the valleys. Listen, I, maybe too many analogies, but you've got, you got to look at the valley more like a tunnel. There's a beginning and there's an end. You will go through. It may be incredibly dark in the middle and you don't see the light at either end, but you've got to remember they're transitory. You are going through and you will go through. 1 Peter 1.6 says this, there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while down here. Now, 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 now listen, you got to dig into this scripture to fully understand what he's saying. Because what he's saying is there may be more valleys than mountaintops, and, and, and the valleys may be really long. But as followers of Christ, we have a hope that non-followers of Christ, that people that, 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 that don't choose to follow that they don't have, that we know, even if it doesn't feel like I get through the valley today, even if it doesn't feel like, God forbid, I get through this valley in my life, I have a hope that no one can take away, that one day I will be in heaven with my heavenly father and there will be no more valleys to walk through. And he says, sometimes that's what you gotta hold on to. 
They're going to be there, but they're transitory. One more. Valleys are purposeful. Here's what I mean by that. I'm not saying God causes the valleys, but I do believe he will work for his purpose in your life and your life in the world in every valley that you go through. Back back in 1 Peter 6 there where we were, verse 6 and 7, he says, at the present, you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. This is no accident. There's a purpose in this. It happens to prove your faith. Notice it says temporarily, not gonna last forever. It says in your life, you're gonna have all kinds of trials. There are gonna be spiritual valleys and relational valleys and financial valleys and emotional valleys, all of these things you're going to go through. Let me tell you this, it's not easy, but I do believe God wants to build your faith in the valley. You see, if you're like me, <coughs> we love mountaintops, don't we? I, I, I mean, I, I prefer the view from the mountaintop to the view in the valley. It's fun to be on the mountaintop. But let me tell you this, it's in the valley where you build your faith. You don't grow your faith. You don't grow stronger on the mountaintop. You build your faith. You grow in the valley. As a matter of fact, if you've ever done this, the higher you go, if you've ever been in some, so, some high mountains, the, the higher you go, often the less vegetation is there. It doesn't change the view. It's great. And it's a wonderful place to be. It's just that the rivers, the streams, the the, the things that are growing often grow in the valley. And and, and here's the truth. We get on the mountaintop. We consider the mountaintop when everything's going great. When everything's going great in our lives, you know what happens? We often forget God. We we often think, oh, everything's great. I can do this on my own. And guess what I've done? And look at this. Most of the time we get on the mountaintop and we don't need need God. But when you walk through a dark valley, you realize your need for God. That's when you get on your knees. That's when you draw close to God. That's when you find his strength. It's in the valleys. You find out how real he is. Listen, God doesn't cause the valleys. Most of them that you walk through, but he's gonna have purpose in them if you will allow him. Psalm 23, verse four, even in my dark valleys, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So if all of that's true, how do we walk through these dark places? How do we go through these dark valleys? How do we respond in those times in our life? Let me give you a couple of things and we'll pray. Here's the first thing. You're walking through the valley, you're walking through the dark places, you gotta fight discouragement. Sometimes when we try to get out of the dark valley, it's easy to give up, isn't it? It's easy to just get discouraged, throw up our hands, I'm done. I don't wanna do this anymore. Everything's gone, it's too dark, I can't see the end of this, I am out of this. But Psalm 23, David says, even though I walk through. In other words, he says, I'm, I'm not panicking. I'm not turning around, even though I want to. I'm not just falling down right here and stopping. I'm not trying to run away from anything. I'm walking through this valley because God has called me to trust him and I'm gonna continue to move. See, you, you, you can't get away from the valleys. So it's all about how you decide to go through, you gotta fight discouragement. He goes on, if I walk through the valley shadow, shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. You, you know what that implies? That implies a choice. It implies a decision that we have to make. It's not, it's not necessarily some spiritual place God brings you to, to where you say, hey God, bring me to this place where there's never any fear, never an opportunity to fear anymore. Now, you know what it implies? It implies there's a, there's a choice that we need to make. What are we going to lie on? Are we, are we just going to look at the shadows and be afraid and quit? We're going to rely on God. We're going to find the light. We're going to say, you know what? I'm choosing to not respond in fear. I'm choosing to not let myself get discouraged and quit. I am going to walk through So think about how are you walking through the valleys in your life? Have the shadows overwhelmed you? Have you become afraid and paralyzed? Have you panicked, run the other way? Or have you decided, hey, I'm gonna trust you, God, and I'm gonna walk through this valley? What attitude, what choice are you making? Choosing to focus on the light? 
Do you tend to focus on the shadows? Because it determines, it makes all the difference. What you focus on makes all the difference. Colossians 1.11 says this, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. Often his power is found in the valley. On our own energy, guess what? We give up. You ever been there? Want to just give up? I can't do this anymore. We're right, we can't. But God can. He can empower our lives. He can touch you. He can fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is ask him. And he can say, I will meet you right there. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be afraid. You can walk through this valley. Here's the second thing you got to do. Walk through the valley. You got to remember that God is with you. Verse four, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And the more I studied this, the more I read that, you are with me. The more those four words gave me life, gave me comfort. Because there's a lot of times we feel alone, right? There's a lot of times when we feel abandoned and hurt by people around us, people we love, we let ourselves down. Sometimes we don't even feel God and we wonder, God, where are you? And David reminds us, God, he says, you are with me. It's, it's like the whole Psalm hinges on those four words. I can make it because you are with me. You haven't left me. You haven't, you haven't forsaken me. You haven't run from me. You haven't abandoned me. You are with me. God promises his power in the valley. God promises his presence in the valley. You're never gonna walk through a dark valley, dark place alone. God is with you. He will hold your hand. He will carry you. Look at Isaiah 43 too. It says, it says, when you go through deep waters and great trouble, what? I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Maybe you are in a dark valley, a dark place right now, and you feel like you're drowning and you feel like you're going under. You feel like you're going to die under the pressure. But hear this, you haven't drowned yet. You're still breathing. You're still making it. And guess what? God is with you. You are are gonna make it. Don't give up. Don't let discouragement win. You're gonna make it. As you walk through and you remember that God is with you, he will be with you every step of the way. You know, in reading this, you, you, you notice a shift. And sometimes I, I think it's easy to miss. King David makes a significant shift in, in the words he's using. Right? If, if you've read through it, it's, it's from the third person to the second person, right? As he's first talking about God, he, he will lead me, right? He will lead me by the still waters. He will lead me by the paths, in the paths of righteousness. But there's a change when David gets to the dark valley. He changes from third person to second person. He says, you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they will comfort me. You, you see it's in the valleys where you're brought face to face with God. When, when, when we're going through dark valleys, we want to talk about God. I want to talk to God. I want to, I want to push in. I want to get to know him in a valley. I don't need a religion. I need a relationship with my creator. So ask anybody who's walked this out long enough to experience some things in life. Anybody who's maturing in their relationship with Christ, and you know what they're gonna tell you? I would never wish the valley on anybody, but I've never felt closer to God. He's never been more real to me. He's never given me more comfort, taught me more about his character, helped me to trust him than those dark places where I just said, God, I need you. I met God in the valley. Mountaintops are wonderful, but God's presence often becomes so real in the valley. It's during those times that you're talking to God. 
not about God, but you're depending on him and pushing in, not just enjoying what he does. Here's the last one for today. We go through the valley. We have to trust in God's protection and guidance. David writes, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And then he has this last phrase, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff, two basic tools of any shepherd. And David would have known these well because he was a shepherd before he was king. And so these would have been items he would have been very familiar with and skilled at using. So I don't know if you've ever looked them up. I didn't even really know what, what the rod looked like, but the rod is typically some, like a piece of wood about two feet long. And most of the time I'd have a, a knot on the end of it. And shepherds would get really skilled at using that rod. Read about, they could, they, they could throw it almost like a missile, man, dead on target. If a predator come, if something come after they pick up that rod, man, they could use that to fight off the enemy, to scare things away. They could use it as a club if they needed to, to defend themselves, to defend the sheep that they were called to protect. They used it to protect the sheep. And listen, when you're going through a valley, you gotta understand God fights for you. When you're fighting for your life, God is fighting for you. God is fighting off spiritual forces of darkness right now at this very moment so that you can know him, so that you can walk through this valley, the shadow of death. He is your defender and he is your protector. That's what the rod is and the staff, right? You're probably more familiar with the shepherd's staff, the long stick with kind of the, the crook on the end of it. You, you, you know what they would do with that, right? It's, it, that probably, in a sense, we would, we would understand that one. They would often use that to, to pull a sheep close to them. When they needed to have one, help one heal, to, to pull it over close. When one got in a little trouble, started to stray away, they would reach over and, and pull that shepherd, that, that, that sheep back to them. You, you know what else they would use it for? They would use that to, 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 to guide and direct especially when they're on narrow or, or, or dangerous paths. God is going to use his staff to direct you and to guide you. And he's gonna use his rod to protect you from danger. We all go through dark valleys in our lives. And here's what happens if we don't understand. We get mad at God. We blame God, we run from God. God, this is all your fault. But as followers of Christ, if we're gonna really live out his word, what we say we believe, it's in those times that we need to choose to push in, choose to lean in and depend on him, know that he's there, that he is with us. We don't have to be afraid of the shadows. He will bring light to the issue and help us deal with it. And he will guide us, that he will protect us. Listen, Christians go through dark valleys just like everybody else. Christians have disappointments. Christians get sick. Christians have tragedies. Christians have financial problems. Christians have family problems. Christians have emotional problems. Christians go through dark valleys just like everybody else. But there's a difference. And there's a big difference. The difference between someone who's not a Christian going through a dark valley and someone who is a Christian going through a dark valley is not the absence of a shadow. It's the presence of a savior. Look at our last verse, Psalm 34, 19. The good man does not escape all troubles, but the Lord helps him in each and every way. Listen, you're gonna face shadows in your life. You're gonna walk through dark valleys. There are gonna be things that need to be dealt with. The question is, do you have God as your shepherd? Are you trusting in him? Are you choosing to walk through saying, I'm choosing not to fear, not to get discouraged. I'm not stopping. Are you saying, God, meet me here in this valley. Let me know how real you are. You're remembering that God is with you. Are you allowing him? to protect and guide you. It'll make all the difference. We bow your heads and we pray with us right now. Father, I just pray, take this word, seal it in our hearts. God, wherever we are, whatever we're walking through right now, meet us here. Let us know how close you are and lead us and guide us and help us to trust in you. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, worship team is gonna come right back on and sing one more song. While we do this, would, would, would you just open your heart to God? About maybe what you're going through, invite him close. Worship him to sense how close he really is to feel his presence. And if you don't have a relationship with God, would you let him speak to your heart right now? We're gonna sing this song, then I'm gonna be right back. Let's worship together.